Hey, welcome to our weekly University of Rio Grande, Ohio State University South Center's collaboration podcast show. We are here at the University of Rio Grande TV studio, and not only are we doing live internet radio through Blog Talk Radio, but also live TV on Rio Grande Cable Access Channel 17. Our podcasts are archived on Blog Talk Radio, and our TV podcast is placed on YouTube for viewing at your convenience. Our mission is simple. Promote the University of Rio Grande and its diverse educational programs. Promote the Ohio State University South Centers and its many business technology programs. And finally, promote Southern Ohio, a great place to live, learn, and enjoy life to the fullest. We have a number of co-hosts, including Jason Winters, Director of the Center for Small Business Entrepreneurship, Mike Thompson, Director of the Instructional Design and Media Services, at both at the University of Rio Grande, Patrick Dingle, Business Development Specialist, and Kimberly Rausch, Program Assistant, who are both with the Ohio State University South Centers. This week, we will be featuring Dr. Govinda Coriella, an economics and business professor with the University of Rio Grande, Evans School of Business. We will discuss a common theme, and that is the effects of increasing gasoline prices that concern all of us, especially those living in rural areas. In larger cities, there is more readily available public transportation, but in rural areas, not so much. Govinda will talk about the positive and negatives of the increasing gasoline prices, how do economists generally view the issues, why are, prices in, why are price increases so much, what can be done about these increases, and what kinds of policies and issues, political issues, will help or hinder the economy in the near future and in the long run. Govinda. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm talking about the issue of increasing gasoline prices. It is a common issue, of course, and affected all of us. It has affected all of us, and it affects more for us than those who are living in the cities where they do have the alternatives, tr alternative transportation. But we have to drive for everything. And driving 40, 50 miles an hour, uh, 50 miles a day is not unusual. So it will affect a lot whenever we have to pay the higher increasing prices. We have to go for grocery, picking up the kids, and so on. The impact is large. And further, many people are still out of job. And we have seen very slow recovery in this economy. People are already troubling to get out of the mess. In addition to this trouble, we are seeing rapidly increasing gasoline prices. We are having $4 a gallon, well even sometimes they say 3.99.9, which is basically 3.9, 3.99 actually $4, but uh, for the psychological purpose. It is not yet four to make it that way. But anyway, it may go even higher. Some, some people are expecting to go to $5 a gallon. But the question is, why it is increasing so much? And can anybody do anything in this regard? Nobody wants higher grass prices. 
the blame goes on to figure out who is responsible for increasing oil price. Who? Where do Americans place the blame when gasoline price goes up? In recent Washington Post, we have seen the poll and many people are blaming for uh, government, for administration and for suppliers, for many others. But uh, major focus or major cause for the gasoline is not to blame to anybody but the market itself. Price actually is determined by the forces of market demand and market supply. But many people would say, well, president can do anything. US president can do a lot to fix the price. Can he? <laughs> Not much. All prices are set in the world market. We know that. Price is determined basically by the force of supply and demand. Unless somebody hinders, somebody stands up in between. Many times I have asked to my students, how many of you would like the government to restrict the price to one dollar per gallon? I see almost all hands rise up. But when I ask the follow-up question, if you were selling the gasoline and if you had to pay three dollars a gallon to your supplier, would you supply the gasoline at one dollar gallon? Nobody raises the hands. Then they realized the problem. Actually, government tried to fix that price in the wake of 1972 energy crisis, but it didn't work. It simply created long lines. People had to stay in the long lines, could not get enough, whatever they want. But there is one interesting fact also here. According to Federal Energy Information Administration, production of oil in the United States has increased. And for the first time since 1949, U.S. has become net exporter of refined petroleum products like gasoline. If we are producing that much, Simple economics would say that price had to go down. Then one may question, if the production is going up, why the price is still rising? As I said earlier, price are set by the supply and demand in the world market. United States counts only about 10 percent of the production. If it, it cannot influence much to the world price, then how can it fix the price? We cannot. If the people in China, India are uh, okay, if the people in India and China are buying from us, are willing to pay higher than suppliers over here also would uh, be willing to supply over there. Whoever will pay the higher price, they will supply over there. So that is major reason for the price has been increasing. The demand from the other 
growing economies. Okay, we'll go further actually in the po podcast. I'll discuss a lot more, not in one side of this economy going higher prices. In one side, it is affecting us in the negative way, but I'll point out some of the positive ways as well in the podcast. Thank you very much.